All right, what we're going to talk about today is some of the new access controls that are coming to SharePoint Embedded, specifically on the permission side of things. So one of the new features that we're coming out with, in addition to the adaptive permissions that you currently have on containers, so remember from a SharePoint Embedded perspective, containers are those things that hold documents in your application. Currently, the adaptive permissions work as if you are uh, have access to the container or if you don't have access to the container and want to grant someone specifically uh, the ability to get into a folder, let's say, and see the documents that are in a folder, you can add, hence the adaptive permissions, add permissions to that folder. That person can see the documents that are in the folder. If you create folders underneath there, they will also be able to inherit those permissions and create them as well. Okay. One of the things that we are introducing is restrictive permissions. So kind of sort of think of inheritance and broken inheritance that you are familiar with on the SharePoint side of things. Uh, this does have the ability to uh, break the permissions on an object for groups that are assigned to the object. Uh, we'll get into the details of that in just a second. But again, that is something that we are uh, in the process of rolling out here shortly. All right, so what, what exactly are restrictive permissions? Uh, when restrictive permissions are set on an object, so think file, folder, uh, you can determine how those permissions are retained. Uh, you'll see the JSON uh, post over there on the right-hand side. And on that endpoint of create link, once you've specified what container you want to target and what item, i.e. file or folder, then you can also determine what type of inherited permissions you want to use. Uh, true is going to strip everything out, okay? So from the parent object, all of those are going to be stripped out. From the false value, uh, permissions are removed from the item except for the default groups, okay? So a uh, little bit of flexibility there that you can use. This is the graph endpoint that you uh, currently have uh, in your environment today. Uh, users, uh, I'm sorry, groups should be added and removed as necessary. So the permission endpoint uh, can be used to remove uh, or add those groups to the uh, link application there. And also the permissions, again, if you create a, or if you break the inheritance on a particular folder, then any other objects created underneath there, i.e. children, are gonna inherit that as well. So that newly created child object is going to be created as well. Okay. All right. So from a restricted permissions, again, some really cool stuff coming out there. Next thing I want to quickly transition to, and then we'll uh, hand it over to Mark to give us a quick demo on some of these endpoints, SharePoint embedded SharePoint groups. Uh, so it is kind of what you think it is. We're creating and managing SharePoint groups in SharePoint contain uh, embedded containers. Uh, so these are objects obviously not created in Entra ID. Uh, control access to items as you normally would see fit. So add that to a uh, container, add it to a folder, uh, things like that. From a graph perspective, uh, this is uh, needing the graph, uh, the group create and the directory read all four application permissions. And you'll see a sample of some of the endpoints here. Notice that new endpoint called SharePoint Groups takes the title and the description of how you want to create that. I get also some other actions there to manage uh, the group, typical assign, add, remove, and so forth there. When you do execute that endpoint, it's going to return back the ID of the group that's created. That's your key to uh, enabling that throughout most of the application and all of the objects that you want to grant that to. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mark, and we're going to walk through uh, some demos on how this works. Um, yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks, Steve. Um, and yeah, so what we're looking at here is uh, the Postman Visual Studio Code extension, if you haven't used it before, no big deal. It's just a way of exploring some of those APIs that Steve was showing us earlier. So I'm going to give you a really quick tour of, of those APIs so you can understand a little bit more detail of how you can use those new access control features that Steve mentioned. Um, first, we're going to just kind of get a container here. Um, I already have an access token. Today, I'm going to be using an app-only token, um, and that's because the group management capabilities require an app-only access token. So you have to be app-only in, in order to use that. 
I already have a container, so I just wanted to get it and show you what that looks like. So I'm, today I'm going to use the beta endpoint. All of these new access controllers or access control features are, are brand new, so they're going to be on the graph beta endpoint. And right now I'm just getting a container. So this isn't a new API, but I'm just showing you the container that I have. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit, um, and we're going to look at it's kind of just this permissions object. And so um, before the before you know the new features that we're talking about and announcing today, we already had this permission construct on a container, um, which which was these roles. And so you could assign uh, users or groups to the built-in permission roles that exist on these file storage containers. So there's reader, writer, owner, and manager. Um, and that that's really handy. And that was kind of following an additive permission model where um, if I add somebody as a reader on the container, they're going to be able to read all of the files on that container, no matter what. Um, and then similarly, if I have you know groups assigned to that as well, so that that's good. Everything is going to cascade. Um, another thing we're we're announcing today is a couple of new features. Um, definitely a lot of customer interest in these features. So if you're working with SharePoint Embedded, um, you know I encourage you to check this stuff out on your own, because these are available on beta now. Um, but specifically, now we can break inheritance and we can create groups within the file storage container to be able to manage permissions. So right now I only have one owner here. So myself, I've, I've added myself as an owner. I'm gonna just go ahead and create a couple of folders in here. So I'm gonna create a parent folder right at the root of this container. And then underneath that, I'm going to make a child folder in that parent. So you can see, I just these are just basic folders, so nothing new here. Um, and this child folder is going to be within that parent. So just creating some structure that we can apply some permissions on. Okay, now into the new APIs. So I'm going to list the SharePoint groups that exist within this file storage container. So I'm going to send that, um, and we don't have any right now. Uh, so you can see, like, I don't have any, I don't have any groups in here. But the new capability that we're offering is the ability to create groups within a container, a SharePoint group within a container, and you can manage the members of that. And so when I do that, um, at a minimum, I have to provide a title to that. So I'm just pulling that from my environment, um, and you know, I can have a description as well. But uh, you at least need a title. And so when I do that, we now have. Uh, SharePoint group within this file storage container. So it belongs to that container. I can't use it across other containers. But what it lets me do is kind of um, be more precise with some of the permissions I have in here uh, and be able to assign those groups or be able to add that group permission to different folders within this container. So Ultimately, all of these new access control features give you a lot more granularity and control to be able to you know, take advantage of effectively what has been the rich permission capabilities within SharePoint. We're bringing a lot of that capability to SharePoint Embedded. So I'm gonna add a member to this group. Um, and in here, in this tenant, I've got Megan Bowen. So if you've used the development tenants, you've seen these users before. So I'm gonna add Megan Bowen. Uh, to be a member of this new group that I made. So that's what the API looks like. Great. So Megan's now a member of that group. Um, and I can go now and look at the group members, which not surprisingly should just list Megan. Great. All right. And now what I want to do is to be able to take that group that we've made and add it, you know, give that group permissions on that parent folder. And so I'm going to give them either write or, or read permissions. Today, I'm going to give them write permissions. And this is how I do it. So um, it's a site group. Instead of you know this grant to do v2 object, we pass the site group, um, the group ID that I just made, and the name of the group. All right, there we go. So my group is uh, now a member, um, is able to write on that parent folder. And when I do that, we can see we have that role assignment there. So there's that group that we made. And now they can write to content within that folder. Awesome. Um, and then within this child folder, oh, we can go look at the permissions there. 
All right, so there we go. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you today, we've got a quick demo, is just how you can break inheritance. So this is just what the API looks like. Um, and then as, as Steve mentioned in the slide, like this allows you to be able to effectively control the permissions. And so when I do this, um, which I'm gonna now call this with this retain inherited permissions true. When I do this, what that's going to do is break inheritance on that child folder. And now what I can do is um, as I change the permissions on that parent folder, those um, the permissions on this child folder will be broken, effectively meaning I can manage it independently of of the uh, ancestors or of the parent of the parent folder. So um, these are the these are the new access control features within SharePoint and Beta and those APIs and shows you how to can use them. So uh, these are available on Beta now, so you can go check them out. Um, and you should give you a lot more control of how you can manage access for your custom applications that are built on SharePoint and Beta. Mm -hmm.